What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Night Out channel and welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters as of the latest game. Closing off the 20s and starting the top 20 most popular Dynasty Warriors characters, we've got Wang Yuanji. Wang Yuanji is Wang Lane's granddaughter, Wang Su's daughter, and historically Sima Zhao's wife. Known for her intelligence and practicality, she foresaw Zhang Hui's rebellion, and she is briefly mentioned in Chapter 119 of Romance of the Three Kingdoms, giving birth to Sima Yan and Sima Yo. Before we jump into how Wang Yuanji has changed since her Playboy debut back in Dynasty Warriors 7 with the introduction of the Jin Kingdom, let's take a look at the popularity polls to see why Wang Yuanji is all the way up here at number 20. In the first popularity poll, Wang Yuanji received 1,687 votes out of a total of over 75,000 votes putting her at the 11th spot in the very first poll and then in the second popularity poll she's going to jump up two more spaces to the ninth position and then unfortunately in my personal ranking she's going to drop all the way down to the 59th position so wang yuanji impressively in those first two polls does really really well and then unfortunately for me she falls down to the 59th spot now in my defense i made this list about four years ago and my playability and accessibility with the character was a lot lower than it was now i didn't really take the time to get to know the character or like play through her or anything like that but Wang Yuanji is actually my favorite looking female in the game itself like Wang Yuanji is the best looking character for a female in the game for me personally I will definitely be raising her number in, in the next rankings that I do for the characters she's a really good looking character personally for me and the only facet of the character that I don't particularly like was probably her weapon style but other than that everything else around the character fits pretty well I like her personality her voice acting again the way she looks is my favorite among the cast of the female characters in this game and because I made the list so long ago I don't think I was looking at it like that back then I, I think I was looking at the weapons the characters were using how often I used the character and potentially if they were a character that I would run to play or you know something along those factors it wasn't a matter of of how they look in terms of the females at least for the female characters I didn't look at it in terms of how they looked that was never a factor for me determining where they stood in terms of the rankings versus the other characters in the game but after playing through so many Musao modes after playing so many stories and seeing you know all the different characters personalities and styles and just really become more well acquainted with all the characters in the game Wang Yuanji is definitely gonna be a lot higher for me again she's the best looking female character in the game and I really liked her as a character as a whole besides her weapon style before we dive a little bit deeper into Wang Yuanji and how she's changed within the game since her Playboy debut, let's talk a little bit more about Wang Yuanji for people who don't know. So like I said, Wang Yuanji was a Chinese noble lady, aristocrat, and later empress of the Jin dynasty. She was the wife of Sima Zhao and became the empress during the reign of her son, Sima Yan. She was known for her wisdom, good moral character, and contributions to the origin and stabilization of the Jin kingdom, and for predicting Zhang Hui's rebellion. Within the games, Wang Yuanji is a caring and gentle woman to the weak and innocent, and she was a perceptive woman who thinks of the greater good for her country. She rarely had tolerance for procrastination or excessiveness, and whenever possible, she seeks to reach quick, efficient, and decisive conclusions to conflicts. Within the games, you can see this personality that Wang Yuanji has, especially when she interacts with Sima Zhao, who is kind of the opposite when it comes to Wang Yuanji. She's a very grounded character, and she doesn't ever seem to be in a position where she is unnerved or in a position where she's rattled as a character. The only times you really see that is when people confess her genuine feelings to her, especially like Sima Zhao. She becomes a little befuddled with her words and runs off and stuff, but most of the time she maintains a very cool composure and she's the one that keeps Sima Zhao on track for whatever it is he's doing. We'll dive deeper into her relationship with Sima Zhao towards the latter part of the video, but within the games and throughout history, Wang Yuanji was known to be a really humble and a person of good morals who always seemed to do the right things and did what was necessary for her kingdom. And like I already stated, she predicted that Zhang Hui was going to betray Sima Zhao in the Jin Kingdom because of the way she was perceiving him as a person. She could already see that Zhang Hui was a person who forsook moral principles for her personal gains. Zhang Hui is a very egotistical, selfish person, and when Sima Zhao and other people favor him because of his talent and his ability, Zhang Hui is the character to take advantage of that. Wang Yuanji is perceptive enough to realize that and therefore warn Sima Zhao before the rebellion actually happened. But yeah, Wang Yuanji was a very respectable character. I liked her personality within the game. I liked the relationship that she had with Sima Zhao. And she's just a very stoic kind of female character. We don't have a lot of stoic characters that are female in the game. And it's really cool to see that in Wang Yuanji because she does have her moments of quote unquote weakness when Sima Zhao is getting a little chummy with her. I think you need to be punished for this. Then please punish me. I 
Don't trust this meekness. It's really cool to see that level-headedness that Wangi Wanji always seems to maintain whenever she's having a conversation or guiding Sima Zhao in the right direction. And I'm not saying that Wangi Wanji was like a puppet master to Sima Zhao, but it was more of like when Sima Zhao didn't want to do something or if he wanted to, you know, take the easy way out or whatever it was, Wangi Wanji was there to keep him intact. But the only thing I didn't really like about the character within the game was her weapon style. And we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it since I'm already talking about it. Her weapon style within the game is the throwing dagger. The throwing dagger was an okay weapon. I can see the usefulness for the weapon throughout the games, but I personally just didn't really favor the weapon itself. Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8, the weapon was okay. It was very useful in Dynasty Warriors 8. It definitely gets you to your rage mode a lot faster than pretty much any other character that I've used, at least with the throwing daggers. Wangi Wangi's attacks was able to initiate the rage mode a lot quicker than any other character. It was quite surprising how fast the rage gauge actually went up. I didn't even have like the rage boost on for her and it was still flying. Like she was filling it up so quickly. It was kind of crazy to see how fast the rage gauge was filling up to where you can pretty much use it throughout the entire stage. But the weakness of the throwing daggers in Dynasty Wars 7 and 8 is that it didn't make any of the enemies flinch. So if you were not careful, you could have enemies run through you and do a lot of damage. In Dynasty Wars 9, they actually give the throwing daggers the ability to flinch, so it's a little bit easier to use. And they also maintain some of the moveset that she has in the previous game. So I did actually like a little bit of the moveset that she had. Her Musao attacks were fine. Didn't have anything to complain about the Musao attacks. I thought they were just fine. Nothing too crazy, but nothing like, it wasn't like really, really bad or anything like that. I think I liked the aerial Musao attack the most. That was really cool. That was probably the best one for her. And then personally for me, my favorite moveset that she had, uh, it was actually at the end of her rage attack. And then it became like the basic attack combo for her in Dynasty Warriors 9. She basically like jumps in the air and she like hits the throwing daggers on the ground. It bounces enemies up and then she kicks them back down. I thought that was a really cool animation. Like out of the moveset, that was probably my favorite combo of her. It was just really satisfying to knock enemies up and then kind of like kick them down like that. She just, I don't know, the animation looked really cool and I really enjoyed that moveset. But, but yeah, I don't have anything against the character per se. I, again, I know I made that list a long time ago. She's definitely gonna be a lot higher for me in the next one. The weapon style itself is not a weapon that I would particularly go to play. Like the throwing daggers is not a weapon that I would particularly want to use, but I think it fits her well as a character. Again, it's just not a style that I would want to use personally. Now moving on to her appearance, and this is the best part of the character for me. I've already stated it. I think she's the best looking female character in the Dynasty Warriors series for me personally. And throughout all the games, I think she looks really, really good. Can't complain about her appearance at all. I think it fits her really, really well. And they do a really good job with her appearance of translating that level-headedness, that cool, calm composure into her appearance. Because the way they have her looking like her eyes, it's a very relaxed but like composed look that she has in her eyes. And through her appearance, you can see a little bit of her personality. And that's what I really like about the character. I think she looks great. And I can't complain too much about the way Wang Wanji looks. Now moving on to her voice acting. Her voice acting within the games is fine. I honestly thought she had a different one for Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8 because it sounds a little bit different. Like in Dynasty Warriors 8, she, she sounds a little bit more mature or like a, like a deeper sounding voice. You almost sound as though you think I am going to die on you. Than she did in Dynasty Warriors 7. And now, there is no one else for you to leave anymore. But it was the same voice actor, and I thought she did great for both games. I think, you know, Wangi Wanji, again, the voice acting for her is really good. And then Dynasty Warriors 9. Where did Master Zhao run off to again, I wonder? Again, I think the voice acting fits her pretty well. It fits for the character that she is. She has that tone of cool, calm composure. But of course, when she has those moments of befuddledness, it comes out and you can see that within the voice acting. It fits her really well as a character. I can't complain about the way she sounds. And it just complements the character really well. The way she looks, the way she sounds, it all plays well into the character. So I can't complain about her voice acting at all. Let's go ahead and move on to her significant battles, her relationships, and her death. So her battles and her death is not really mentioned at all. I mean, of course, the battles that she's a part of with Sima Zhao is very important, but she's not playing a significant role in any of them. I would say that, you know, I guess the most important battle would be her letting Sima Zhao know that Zhang Hui is going to rebel, but then again, she's still not like a part of that. So no significant battles for her. Her death wasn't mentioned in the games. I think in history she dies at a certain point, you know, old age, illness, one of the two, uh, but nothing crazy about that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into her relationship. So the main relationship she's going to have within the game is going to, of course, be with her husband, Sima Zhao, and she's also going to have some minor relationships with Zhang Chunhua, Sima Shi, and Jia Shang. 
out of all those minor relationships, he's going to have the closest relationship with Shang Chun Hua. Shang Chun Hua is Sima Zhao's mother, so because, you know, she is the wife of Sima Zhao, they have an inherent relationship. And it's shown through some of the games that they have cutscenes together, they're interacting with each other. They're very, very close because of that relationship. Shang Chun Hua sees, you know, her son as an imbecile at times, and, you know, even though Wang Yiwanji does get on Sima Zhao a lot for his incompetence and immaturity, uh, she actually ends up defending him from what Shang Chun Hua was saying. And he's, she's basically saying, like, he's not as bad as you think. As long as he puts his mind to something, he's a really capable person. But they had a really close relationship. It was kind of cool to see that mother, you know, daughter relationship that they have. And then moving on to her relationships with Sima Shi and Jia Shang. I think the relationship with Sima Shi and Jia Shang is kind of similar. And the only reason I say that is because these three characters all push Sima Zhao to become the best version of himself. She's mostly on the side of, you know, Zhao, you need to do better. You need to work harder. You know, make it actually look like you want to be here. Whatever it is, right? She's on the side of Jia Shang and Sima Shi, pushing Sima Zhao to become a better person. So she's able to have those interactions with him as they, you know, are talking to Sima Zhao, or maybe she's talking to them one on one or whatever it is, and discussing how Sima Zhao is progressing or what Sima Zhao might have to accomplish with, you know, Sima Shi passing away. Just the whole process of Sima Zhao becoming the ruler of the Jin Kingdom. She definitely had an understanding for Sima Shi and Jia Shang's guidance and critiques that they had for Sima Zhao. So I would definitely say in my relationship with those two, probably closer to Jia Shang because Sima Shi ends up passing away a little premature. So after that happens, it's her and Jia Shang that's mainly supporting Sima Zhao directly. But finally, her last relationship and the most important one, like I've already mentioned, is with Sima Zhao. It's her husband. She's basically his support throughout his campaign as a leader to the Jin Kingdom. Even before he becomes a leader, she's there pushing him to be the best that he can, trying to just... Because, you know, Sima Zhao before you know, his father and brother pass away was kind of like, I don't, you know, what's the point of me even really trying? I got two people who are extremely capable at conquering the entire land. What do they need my help for? I'm not going to be of any use to them. And Wang Yuanji was there saying, you know, no, you need to try hard. You need to be there for your brother. And then, you know, of course, kind of throwing Jia Shang back into it. Jia Shang would be saying the same thing. The Sima clan is rising in power. You are part of the Sima clan. You're going to be dragged into it. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, Wang Yuanji was there helping support him, keep him grounded. You know, at times when Sima Zhao was, you know, confused or didn't know what to do or indecisive, he had his wife Wang Yuanji there to help guide him in the right direction. Because of her personality, because of how grounded and level-headed and decisiveness and, you know, her, how quick she was on her feet and, you know, just thinking and, you know, she was a very intelligent person. She was able to, you know, balance Sima Zhao out and help him continue on his path. That's why there's moments within the cutscenes when Sima Zhao is asking her to stay with him, not just in the terms of being married or being together, because he understands and cherishes Wang Yuanji's help and support that she gives him that nobody else can. And of course, seeing the chumminess between them, uh, it's really fun to see. It's a playful thing that Sima Zhao brings out in her. And uh, it definitely catches her off guard. It actually catches me off guard seeing her get caught off guard <laughs> because she's usually so calm and collected. So when she's like befuddling or like sometimes she would say like a line and it wouldn't make any sense to what he just said. But it's because he was being, you know, chummy or being flirty or whatever it was. And it's just cool to see. It's kind, of, it's, it's funny to see that little relationship. It's kind of like they're in the beginning stages of dating or whatever it is. But, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I have for Wang Yiwanji. Again, she is my favorite female character. In terms of looks, uh, I think she's my second favorite character, favorite female character overall. Um, I think there's only one person above her that I can think of right now. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have for Wang Yiwanji. Her weapon style was okay. Voice acting was really good. Uh, again, I like the relationship with her and Sima Zhao. And then just her personality in general. She has a really unique personality to females in the game. She has that stoicness about her that most females don't have. And uh, it's just really cool to see that. I like Wang Yiwanji as a character. And again, she's going to be a lot higher for me in the next list. Well, that's all I have for Wang Yiwanji here, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely appreciate it. Like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let me know what you think about her down below. She did really well in those first two polls. There's a lot of fans of her out there. I totally understand. And again, <laughs> I don't know how many times I have to say it, but, you know, she's, she was lower for me because back then I wasn't looking at it in terms of how they look. I was looking at it in terms of how often do I play them, their weapons that I, you know, they use, and, you know, stuff like that. That was main the main factor for me back then. And uh, back then, I... You know, I never really played as Wang Yuanji. And I don't think moving forward she'd be a character that I would jump to play. But I would definitely appreciate, you know, the way she looks and her personality and stuff like that. Moving forward in the next Dynasty Warriors games. But yeah, guys, that's all I have. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about Wang Yuanji down below. If I missed anything or anything like that. And if you enjoyed it, definitely appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs>